Hello and welcome to Business Watch. I'm your host, Bob Williford, President of the Henderson County Chamber of Commerce. And Business Watch is a show that's co-produced by Blue Ridge Community College Television and the Henderson County Chamber of Commerce. Our show focuses on the Henderson County economy and the forces that drive our local economy. Previous shows have focused on the Henderson County camp industry, our real estate market, and we also had a show on what it takes to start a business in Henderson County. And if you'd like to view those shows, you can go to our website, www.brcctv.org. Today, we're going to talk about the Henderson County job market. And before we get into uh, talking about that with our guests, I do want to mention that Blue Ridge Community College and the Chamber of Commerce are hosting a job fair on June the 7th from 1 o'clock until 5 p.m., right here at the community college in the conference hall. So if you are out there looking for a job or if you're a company looking for employees, we would love to have you join us again on June the 7th for a job fair here at Blue Ridge Community College. And the show today again focuses on the, the job market. Our guests today are Marilyn Williams, who is the office manager for the North Carolina Department of Commerce Division of Workforce Solutions. Correct. And we have Tracy Troy Kerr with, uh, right here at Blue Ridge Community College with the Job Link Center. So welcome and thank, thank you. you for joining us today. Appreciate and I'm sure you all are excited about a job fair. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. so, well, there are a lot of people out looking for work and there are a lot of employers looking for, for workers. So Correct. hopefully we can make a few connections on June the 7th. Exactly. And Marilyn, we're going to start with you. Okay. Well, I'm the manager of well, you the... Dive right I'm in, sorry. You start, <laughs> I am the manager of the um, Hendersonville uh, Job Link office, and um, we do here lately seem like we've been doing more unemployment, but thankfully that uh, is kind of going by wayside. We're, we're hoping um, that we do get a lot of folks out to the job fair. Um, Different things that we do in the office besides unemployment is we help folks to find work um, through our job information system. Um, we have other uh, special programs that folks come in, such as our trade program. We have um, a former offenders program. We had been doing the food nutrition program. Um, as well as our veteran services, so a lot of different, a lot of different things right. for folks to come. So in. when you say you do unemployment, that when someone loses a job and they want to file for unemployment insurance, correct? They come to see you guys. They can come into the office. Um, we will guide them as to what they need to do to um, meet the guidelines, the right. criteria for unemployment insurance. And if they, obviously, you've got programs in there to help them get back to work. That is so. correct. We do workshops um, as well as we do have folks that work one-on-one -on -one with those that might need some assistance with resumes, um, just doing some assessments, things like that. Okay. Now, Tracy. Yes. The Job Link Center. Mm -hmm. Y'all do all, all kinds of things. We do. So, if you'll dive into that, because okay. there's, there's a whole lot to cover there. All right. I sure will. And actually, we do a lot of the same things Correct. that uh, Marilyn does with her staff. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Y'all kind of have personnel working at each we other's do. offices, yes, so y'all work very do. closely together. Very closely. Okay. Right, and Good. I think a lot of folks do not, maybe not, realizing that there are two job link offices right. here in Henderson County. Um, our office is one, and we're the Hendersonville job link office, and of course the camp, the, the job link office here on campus is the Henderson County oh, job link office. Right. I did right. not know there was right. that distinction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do do a lot of the same um, services and what we do maybe a little bit differently is uh, we offer resources to an individual to help them to determine their employability skills. Uh, we have what's called the Career Readiness Certificate that is an ACT um, created tests and this career readiness certificate is based on needs that employers have determined and an individual can come in and practice for that career readiness certificate. They can then be scheduled to test and they would actually test in three different areas, math, reading, and locating information. And each of those tests is 55 minutes and they get a North Carolina Career Readiness Certificate 
which actually is recognized in at least 45 states across the country. Uh, and it verifies to an employer that the individual actually has tested and proven that they have these employability skills. So that career readiness certificate is a great program for anybody that's looking for a job because they can use that as a credential on their resume. Okay. Uh, we These also the three areas are applied math, math, applied math, locating information, which translates into being able to read uh, charts and graphs and maybe a map, uh, log books, things like that, and then uh, reading for information. And these were all employer identified areas? That, yes, okay. uh, and in, uh, nationwide employers have uh, made the requirements known and that's what we test on. Excellent. We also have uh, career counselors and a job coach so someone can come in and work one-on-one -on -one if they're not quite sure of what uh, path they might want to take in their career or if they want to change careers. We also have uh, workshops like Marilyn right. does, um, acing the interview, uh, effective communications, learning how to really use your networking system. Uh, we have uh, probably about five regular workshops that we do every month. And then we also have uh, the Workforce Investment Act program. Uh, that somebody can come in and see if they're eligible for funding in case maybe they want to change careers and uh, get some funding for school. And, I mean, what makes someone eligible to do that? What are some of the criteria? Um, they have to be looking for work that's actually long term. Mm -hmm. They have to meet certain economical uh, criteria and uh, depending on where they live, if they come to us, we would work with them for Henderson County. And the programs that they're looking at would be uh, classes that are offered here at Blue Ridge. And um, that's really about... So this kind of focus on the underemployed? Yes. People who have a job? Yes, it's exactly. Okay. Where it's, it's, I think, geared towards someone who's underemployed, unemployed, um, or just struggling in the job that they're in to try to make better right. uh, career choices. Okay. Right, now, you talked about some of the skills training that em employers have identified, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the, the skill sets that you see that employers need. We do have a, a couple of video clips. Uh, we have Greg Burnett from First Citizens Bank and Terry Collins from GE talking about what kind of skills they're looking for when they right. look at potential new hires. So we're going to jump to those clips. We understand that people bank with people. That's why we take our associates' success so seriously. At First Citizens, we want our associates to enjoy what they do, we want them to share ideas, and we want them to grow right along with us. That's why our culture is so focused on helping our associates reach their personal goals. There are several key competencies we look for that we feel will make our associates successful. First is service orientation. Our associates must demonstrate the ability to anticipate and appropriately respond to customer needs, listen attentively and patiently to customer concerns, and work diligently to ensure customer satisfaction. Secondly, we want our associates to be flexible and adaptable. Our industry is very dynamic. We need associates who have the ability to successfully adjust to multiple demands and shifting priorities. They must have the ability to work rapidly and efficiently and to get work done within tight deadlines. We want our associates to have great communication skills. Our associates must demonstrate a good command of spoken and written language. They should clearly articulate their own positions to others and encourage others to contribute ideas by engaging in active listening. They should also have the ability to present complicated information clearly and concisely and by organizing ideas and focusing on key points. We want them to have a strong work ethic. Our associates are willing to commit the necessary time and effort to get the work done without sacrificing quality. They take pride in association with their bank, and they are good stewards of the bank's resources and reputation. And finally, we want associates who are focused on results. We look for individuals that are organized and self-disciplined. They need to demonstrate a strong drive for results and success by bringing issues to closure and persisting despite obstacles and opposition. From an attitude standpoint, 
Yeah, one of the key things that we look for, and it, it may sound pretty trivial, but we need people to be at work and to be on time. Now, for instance, we start here at 7 a.m. in the morning. That's our first shift. Now, quite honestly, some folks aren't suited to be at work at 7 a.m. So this may not be an ideal opportunity for you. For instance, uh, somebody 30 minutes late for work causes a disruption that could impact our customer, and we really don't want to go there. Secondly, we look for people who can you know, pitch in and help when things get jammed up. So for instance, if we've got 10 people uh, on a line and only nine people show up that day, you know, perhaps illness or vacation, uh, those nine people really need to pitch in and pick up the slack. We want people that can do what it takes uh, to produce a quality product in a safe manner. So I think that's uh, very critical to what we look for as well. Another area is, uh, is working in a team environment. We really need people that can work and operate effectively uh, in a team environment. The other variable that we look for is the ability to speak up. We do not want people that assume anything. Uh, you know what can happen when you assume. You know, sometimes bad things can happen. So from our standpoint, we want people to ask questions. We have found that's one of the absolute best ways to learn the job, to really learn what's going on is simply ask. So we look for people who, who, who aren't afraid to ask questions. If something doesn't look right, if it doesn't feel right, ask. It's better to go ahead and ask up front than for us to ship out a bad product. Now, the other major bucket that we look for is aptitude or, or work skills. Now, ideally, we look for folks who have had manufacturing experience. They've been out on a shop floor. You know, they know what it takes. There's a lot of moving equipment, you know, forklifts running around, uh, pinch points in machinery. So, we, you know, we look for folks who have had some manufacturing experience, uh, particularly assembly experience. Uh, we think that's important because they kind of get into the rhythms pretty quick in our environment. Now, for folks who maybe don't have manufacturing experience, we think it's very critical uh, that they have the willingness to learn new processes, uh, to maybe work in a new environment that they perhaps haven't been in in the past. So really to sum it up, I think in our opinion, and I don't think General Electric is, is a lot different than a lot of other companies, uh, attitude and aptitude, I think you put those two together and it's a pretty powerful force. Again, that was Terry Collins at General Electric uh, Lighting Solutions and Greg Burnett at First Citizens Bank. Hey, I was taking some notes as they were talking and, and boy, they mentioned a whole lot of things and, and just that conversation. I, I, Maybe I can hit on a couple of these and, and y'all tell me how important that is and, and where people may pick these skills up through either one of your right. organizations. But I think when Greg talked, he mentioned uh, the service orientation. Uh, both of them also mentioned listening skills. Correct. Now, how critical is that when, or, or is there any testing for that uh, that, that y'all provide? Well, we, of course, we want to make sure that folks are, are matching up with the type of work that they're applying for um, and of course a lot of different employers will have different things but um, we do like for folks to be able to present themselves even in the interview to say you know to, to present themselves in a way that they're very professional um, that they're clear in their objectives and just basically being able to present themselves in a positive attitude yeah. Mm -hmm. and those were mentioned in a few places. Right. I, I did hear the attitude. Uh, one, one that was a little bit different is one was protecting the company's reputation. Correct. Which uh, I, I guess you don't typically hear that as one of the... Well, we want, obviously we, we want folks, like I said, to be able to present themselves and to be able to, to speak, you know, honestly, tru truthfully with yeah. the employers. Um, and, and to be upfront if there's something that an employer needs to understand about maybe their background or what. And it, it, it seems like a lot of the things that they mentioned have been true since, since there were employees and employers. Uh, right. I talked about somebody who would show up to work one time. Uh, Correct. People who were, were self-disciplined and organized. Uh, I think you know, through the years, those seem to be attributes that are always, always needed. Uh, we did hear communications come up, come up quite a bit. 
Um, but one, one that I thought was, was interesting is, is one of them did mention the changing workplace and how, how every, everything seems to be changing from year to year. And that that uh, one important, important skill an employee has to have is to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. Flexible and adaptable. And um, I think in this economy, you have to be able to multitask. You have to be multi-skilled. Um, in order as an employee to be marketable to an employer, you have to be able to sell yourself as able to do mm -hmm. a lot of things and be able to do them well and be able to shift gears if necessary. Well, let me hit this list. I want just what I, what I find amusing. Uh, Service-oriented, service listening skills, flexibility in a changing work, workplace, communications, oral and written, organization, self-discipline, work ethic, uh, protecting the company's reputation, attitude, teamwork, but no words that talk about hard skills. <laughs> I mean, it seems heavy on the soft skills. Right. So. Is, that, is that what you guys see well, most of the time? Well, a lot of employers, I think, if they have someone that they know has the ability to do the job, because they either have the education or the experience in the past, but a lot of times they say, you know, if someone won't show up for work as they are supposed yeah. to, um, then what? Why do they even need that person? Yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of just the general understanding of yes, you need to show up on time. Um, you know, don't clock out early or anything yeah. like that. Um, yes, you need to. You're standing for that particular company. So yes, what you're projecting should reflect, you know, against against that company itself. So it seems like in general the, the first step is is learning these soft skills. And the second A lot step of employers have more, said more that, and, correct. And they even talked about the aptitude was almost secondary to right. the attitude. Uh, I thought that was very interesting. I'm writing down all the things that were mentioned, so many <laughs> of them were were soft skills. A lot of which you learn at home. Right, and I polled some uh, co-workers just by chance last week. I had uh, 10 things which were basically soft skills, and I said, if you are an employer, please rate these for me, and one of them being attitude. And uh, attitude was listed by everyone as number one. It wasn't being the best at the job. It wasn't being the most skilled. It was having the right attitude and being able to learn. And of course, I think being on time and disciplined mm -hmm. were right up there in the top five as well. Wow. So I guess the, the old saying is true, is you hire good people and teach them what to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was, was very enlightening. Now we, we've got a, a job fair that will be coming up in June. But if people are out there looking right now, what are you hearing out in, in the, I guess, the private sector as to what, what industry segments look to be hiring and, and which ones, well, which ones are hot and which ones might not be so hot for well, more opportunities? Well, unfortunately, construction still seems to be the, the struggling. Uh, that, that has been going on for several years mm -hmm. now. Um, hopefully, we'll start to see that turnaround. Um, of course, in our in this area with healthcare, we still do get a lot of um, healthcare-related type job listings coming into the office. Um, thankfully, in Henderson County, we're seeing a lot of resurgence in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So that's you know we're very grateful for that. So um, and just other service-oriented type jobs um, with the. Uh, tour season starting back yeah. up, so seeing more things in retail and uh, restaurants and that such, hotels. Right. And you are hearing the same, same information. Absolutely. Um, pretty heavy on the manufacturing side, especially with Western North Carolina becoming um, almost a mecca for... Um, for beer manufacturers. <laughs> exactly, sure. yeah. exactly. So, yeah, you know, it's a, it's an attractive region, and um, we're trying real hard to make sure that the people have the skills that the right. employers need. Now, we heard Terry Collins speak from GE, local manufacturer and assembler. Uh, are there specific skills that manufacturers would be looking for that maybe not others would be looking for? Or? 
Well, it's it's different than it was when folks who are of the younger age, uh, when their parents were working and grandparents even, where they would go to a plant and basically be responsible maybe for one or two different tasks. Mm -hmm. um, as Tracy said earlier, a person needs to be multitasked. They need to be flexible in learning different skills. Um, just willing to jump right in and, and help where help is needed and um, a lot of things are more robotic now. Um, computers, people need to know how to operate computers. Um, it, it, it is a, a different manufacturing sector than it was several years ago. And, you, and you're working with a number of manufacturers here at Blue Ridge Community College trying to get them prepared that they haven't even opened the doors yet, but you're already <laughs> working with them. Right, exactly. Uh, also, not only working with them, but working with their potential employees and applicants, giving them an opportunity to become familiar with uh, perhaps what the employer's looking for in the ways of manufacturing and safety. Uh, I think the employers put a lot of time and effort up front to make sure that the employee they end up with will be a long-term employee um, and that they won't experience a lot of turnover. Yeah, hiring is an investment. Exactly, mm -hmm. so I agree. Getting, getting the right person, as they say, in the right seat on the glass <laughs> is always always a exactly. good thing to do. Um, and we're gonna come back and talk a little bit more about the job fair in a minute and some of the employers right. who will be there. Uh, but I did want to go through a couple of scenarios with you guys okay. so that we might be able to hit uh, a lot of different segments of, of job seekers. Right. And the first one, and, and I don't know who wants to go first, but if you are a high school graduate and you're not planning to go off to college or something and you want to get started in a career, what are the first steps you should take upon graduation so that you can find a job and and get started with that one. Well, we have folks that do come in, um, even some of them before they've received their diplomas, um, trying to get started, and that's where you know that's admirable because yeah. um, we see exactly, exactly. Some of the uh -huh. that um, but they're coming in just you know wanting a starting point and all this. And we do tell folks that um, first of all, we want to know what type of employment that they're interested in. Um, not just I'll take anything. Yeah. Um, what what did you do in school? Did you you know focus on some certain types of uh, skill sets and all this, and try to get them to think about what is it that they're really interested in doing. Um, we also encourage folks to go ahead and try to start putting a resume together. Um, uh, before, resumes used to be, well, here's where I am working presently and then going backwards. And that's not really, uh, nowadays, you've, you can do resumes many different ways. And so we try to encourage folks to put something together, such as a functional resume, so that it does highlight sk any skill sets that they may have, um, what did they study in school, any volunteering that they may have done, uh, okay. just, just a lot of different things. And then from that point, though, we will basically just try to assist them with looking for jobs um, that they're uh, qualified to do, um, as well as, like I said, once again, interested in, in uh, looking for. Now, now, I know in high school they have a test for that, where you take the test, you answer all these questions, right. and they, they suggest fields that you might be interested in, right. these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. but I think it all goes back to what we all learned as kids is, some of us got the advice that find something you like to do and then find a way to make money mm -hmm. doing it. Right, so, yeah. that's true. And it makes things a lot, yes. lot happier. Exactly, when, when exactly. Right. right. Okay, now I just graduated from Blue Ridge Community College. Okay. What kind I of get help the are you, hard are you question. Give us? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what I would always recommend is go to your job link. Uh, so many people don't realize that the job link is here and we're really trying to focus on making sure that people know we're here and available. All of our services are free of charge okay. and we can hook you up with one-on-one -on -one appointments with uh, the employment coach, with the career counselor, when you can sit down and you can say, this is what I went to school for, um, how do I even begin. Okay. Um, be realistic about your job okay. search. 
right. um, do your research. Uh, is what you want to do available here? May you have to think about relocating. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely stop by the job link either here at the college or um, at DES and see what kind of help and guidance you can get and then search, search, search. It's a <laughs> full-time job looking for a job. Um, and lastly, I would say use your networking mm -hmm. exactly. uh, you also connections. Have, have some internships available through the through uh, I, at, at the job link, uh, Barbara Gregory, she's our human resources development person. She has a co-op program. So we call it co-op. And we're, we're getting short on time, so i got two, two quick questions. All right, the same scenario, but right. you've been laid off. Now, the first place they're going to come to see you. They usually come and yeah. see us. Um, at that, when they do come in and file, we try to encourage folks to go ahead and attend either the workshops at our office or here at, here at the college, at the job link office here in the college. Um, and then that, once again, starts getting them back prepared to try to get off of unemployment as soon as right. possible, but it also helps them focus on what type of work, again, that they're interested in and hopefully refer them on some, some jobs that they're... And, and here's when we get the chamber a lot. Okay. The, the early retirees who have retired from somewhere else, moved to the area, and they don't want to go back to their right. old job. They're just looking for, for a little something to earn some income because they retired a little early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do I tell those people? Again, I, I think that research is important. Make sure that you know what's available. Right. Um, know that you may not be starting out at the salary that you retired right. from. Um, know what a livable wage is for you. And uh, do what you can to get your foot in the door. And then if network you need to, right. network, exactly right. Exactly. With uh, Nowadays, with, with networking, the social medias and all that, it's it's a lot easier than it was several years ago where you had to look up, go to places to look up jobs, but now it's a lot easier. And I think it's still true that more than half the jobs available you won't see in the paper. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly. exactly. I do want to mention one time before we sign off, the June 7th job fair will be right here at Blues Community College from 1 until 5, and some of the companies participating, All States Medical Supply, the Biltmore Company, Borg Warner Thermal, the City of Asheville, Continental Tevis, Facility Logistics Services, Four Seasons Compassion for Life, Gaia Herbs, GE Lighting Solutions, Hendersonville Job Link and Employment. Well, y'all be here providing yes, information. Exactly. Uh, Home Care Free, Kelly Services, Life Care Center, Manual Woodworkers and Weavers, the North Carolina Farm Bureau Insurance, North Carolina Mountain Realty Group, North Carolina State Employees Credit Union, uh, Party Hospital, Park Ridge Health, Pepsi Cola, Pinnacle Staffing, and we're sure there'll be, be many, many others there. So uh, if you're out looking for work, come join us. And if you're looking for employees, uh, call the chamber and we'll get you the <laughs> registration information and, and get you there as well. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as we talked about the Henderson County job market. Hopefully you got some good information and come on out to the job fair. Have a good day. Thank you.